Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about contractility and how the PV loop or pressure volume loop changes with different variables. So with that, let's give it a go. So I would like to start off with what is contractility. So contractility is basically a measure of the heart's intrinsic contractile performance. So it basically describes how well a heart performs as a pump independent of extrinsic factors. So how do we actually measure the contractility? Well, one way we can measure it is this way. So imagine we have a human heart and the human heart has this pressure volume loop. Now, the point that we're gonna look at is this point on the pressure volume loop. And this point marks the end of the isovolumic contraction. So it's the end of the isovolumic contraction. Now remember that the isovolumic contraction is basically when you have the mitral valve and the aortic valve closed and the ventricle contracts until it builds enough pressure so that the pressure inside the ventricle is greater than the pressure inside the aorta, which allows the aortic valve to open, which then therefore allows blood to flow from the ventricle into the aorta. So imagine if we were to take a human heart and we were to close the aortic valve and keep it from opening. What would happen is that the heart would continue to undergo isovolumic contraction until it reached a theoretical maximal pressure. So in other words, the heart will continue to contract until the heart can't contract anymore. And it produces this theoretical maximal pressure. So if we were to do this for a number of different loops, we would get the following dots, as we see right here. So we do this for a number of different pressure volume loops, and we see that, the, that we have three different maximal pressures. And if we were to connect these dots, we would get this line, which describes the relationship between pressure and volume. So it's the relationship between the theoretical maximal pressure and the volume. So it's important to realize that we could not do this experiment in a real human heart or a human, because if we were to keep the aortic valve from opening in a human, this would basically prevent blood from going into the human brain and all the organs which would kill the human. So there's gotta be another way in order to measure this line in a human without killing the human. And the way that we can do that is another point on this curve, which is the end systolic pressure. Because if you were to take the end systolic pressure, or the pressure after systole is ended, what we would see here is that for each of the curves, if we were to take that point for each of the curves, that these points align with the relationship here. So in other words, we can use the end systolic pressure at different EDVs with different curves in order to measure this relationship, this line. This is why this line is called the ESPVR, or end systolic pressure volume relationship. And this end systolic pressure volume relationship is going to be a measure of contractility. And the greater the slope of this line, the greater the contractility. So how do certain variables affect the pressure volume loop? So the first variable we're gonna look at is how increasing the contractility would affect the pressure volume loop. And if we were to do that, we would first have to start off with our control curve. So this is our control pressure volume loop. So this is, let's just say, a normal human heart. And the contractility, remember, can be measured by the ESPVR. And this would be the ESPVR line for this particular pressure volume loop. Now, what if we were to increase the contractility? What would the curve look like? Well, the curve would maybe look something like this. So the first thing that you should notice for this red curve is that the contractility is increased because the slope of this line is increased. But the main thing that you should notice here is that the first thing is that the end diastolic volume for both hearts is kept constant. So for both the red curve and the orange curve is the same end diastolic volume. But what you should notice is that the end systolic volume, so this point of the curve, so this here for the orange curve and here for the red curve is different. The end systolic volume in the red curve is less than the end systolic volume in the orange curve. So in other words, the heart, when we increased the contractility, pumped out more blood than the orange curve. And when we do that, we can see that by measuring the stroke volume. So the stroke volume for the orange curve can be seen right here. 
and the stroke volume for the red curve can be seen right here. So in other words, when we increase the contractility, we increase the heart's ability to act as a pump, which means we can pump more blood out of the heart, which means that the stroke volume has increased. So by increasing the contractility, we increase the stroke volume. And when we decrease the contractility, the opposite happens, we decrease the stroke volume. So now let's talk about what would happen if we were to increase the preload and keeping everything else constant. So let's just say we start off with the orange curve and it has this contractility. And if we were to take this curve and basically increase the end diastolic volume, what we would get is a curve like this. So the first thing that you should note is that we're keeping the contractility constant, but the only thing that we changed is the end diastolic volume. So the red curve has a greater end diastolic volume than the orange curve. And this means the heart has a greater preload. And you could see the effects of this by looking at the stroke volume once again. So remember that the stroke volume is equal to the difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. So this point, the EDV, and this point, the ESV. And when we do that for the orange curve, we see that the stroke volume is this big. And when we do it for the red curve, we see that the stroke volume is this big. So in other words, when we increased the preload, we increased the stroke volume. And the reason why, once again, is first of all, because we have more blood inside the ventricle, so more will be pumped out. And the second reason is because you have a greater stretch on the ventricular myocytes, which allows the ventricular myocytes to act more powerful as a pump. So when we increase the preload, we increase the stroke volume. And when we decrease the preload, we decrease the stroke volume. So now let's talk about increasing the afterload. So remember that the afterload is the pressure that the heart has to work against in order to pump blood out. So if we start off with our normal curve, with our contractility, with our regular contractility here, if we were to increase the afterload, the curve would actually look something like this. So the first thing that you should notice is that the EDV is kept constant and the contractility is kept constant. But the thing that changed was the afterload. And you can see that by looking at this point on the graph here. So remember that this point on the graph is the end of the isovolumic contraction. And this would be the end of the isovolumic contraction on the orange curve. So what you should see here is that the heart is producing more pressure when you have an increased afterload. And the reason why is because remember, when the isovolumic contraction ends, this means that the pressure inside the ventricle is now greater than that in the aorta. And since the afterload has increased, this means the aortic pressure has increased, which therefore means that the heart has to produce more pressure in order to open the aortic valve, which is why the isovolumic contraction ends here when we increase the afterload and not here. So the next thing that you should notice here is that the stroke volume has decreased. So the stroke volume for the orange curve is this, and the stroke volume for the red curve is here. The reason why it's decreased is because, remember, the pressure inside the aorta is greater than it was in the orange curve heart. And when the pressure in the aorta is greater, this means that as the ventricle starts to drop in pressure, this means that the aortic valve will close quicker than it did in the orange curve. Because remember that the pressure inside the aorta is going to be greater when we increase the afterload. So by increasing the afterload, we decrease the stroke volume. And if we decrease the afterload, we increase the stroke volume. So in this video, we talked about what contractility is and how the stroke volume changes for a number of different factors. So I hope this video helped you understand these concepts and I hope to see you next time.